go. Yes, well, sorry for the uh, Facebook, um, the sound, whatever is going on here, but um, I hope um, you all can hear me now. Amen. I hope you all can hear me. I hope you all can hear me. Amen. All right. Margaret Apostle, God bless you. God bless you, Apostle. God bless you. I hope you are doing well. Amen, somebody. Amen. Let's see what's happening here. Um, I hope we are still good. Anyway, so we've been talking. <laughs> well, forgive me for that technical hick. Um, uh, we're still going to check this thing out. Anyway, uh, so we've been talking about the the three the three um, graces the three graces of the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about the three graces. We started with faith. Faith is one of the attributes of the Holy Spirit, and uh, we came down to hope. And so we're going to end the hope um, area, and then today we will jump into the the third aspect of the graces the three graces of uh, the holy spirit and that is in um, the area of love all right and so um go with me now go with me if you please to look at um some scriptures to where we left off yesterday yesterday we left off um with the fact that um hope is our anchor hopes Hope is our anchor for our soul. Hope is our anchor for our soul. And we saw that in Hebrews, in the, um, uh, the scripture, the Hebrews, the sixth chapter, the 18 and the 19 verse. Now go with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I hope all of you um, are well and you can hear me now. Romans the 12th chapter. Romans the 12th chapter. Uh, the 12th verse, Romans chapter 12, verse 12, talks about the fact that we ought to rejoice in our hope. We are to rejoice in our hope. We are to rejoice in our hope. Beloved, this is very important for you and me to understand that. When we talk about hope, we are to rejoice in our hope. So um, again, again, Henry, God bless you. I uh, don't know why I'm still getting all these people on this section here. And um, let me see that. All right, Henry and um, Gerard, God bless you, all of you. All right, so um, Romans 12, the 12th chapter and the 12th verse talks about the fact that we rejoice in our hope, in our hope, the hope that God has or the hope that we have in Christ the hope we have in Christ. Remember, we are talking about the three, the three graces of the Holy Spirit. The three graces of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? So now, um, go with me now to um, 1 Peter 1, 3. 1 Peter 1, 3. And uh, let's look at some scripture here. 1 Peter 1, 3. Very, very important. 1 Peter 1, 3. 1 Peter chapter 1. Verse 3. Are you there? First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Let's see what the scripture says. First Peter chapter 1. Huh? Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In your presence. All right. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant grace, abundant grace has begotten us again to live in hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Do you see that? Let me read that again. First Peter, first Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy, abundant mercy, has begotten us again, again. In other words, 
we had we were and again to a living hope through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead not a dead hope beloved your hope is alive i remember uh, reverend jesse jackson always used to say keep hope alive keep hope alive beloved in the times we are living you need to keep hope alive hope is one of the graces of the holy spirit all right the holy spirit is here to help us in every every dimension of our lives and one of the areas is to keep hope alive without hope beloved you don't have nothing else to hold on to we have faith for the day we have hope for tomorrow we have hope for the next hour which we have not seen we have hope for the next two hours which we have not seen we have hope that by the end of the day it is going to be all right amen somebody by the end of the day everything is going to be all right we have hope in the next minute or two we have hope in christ our hope is not in the world system our hope is in christ jesus blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ all right just giving the necessary accolades to god the father who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again remember remember that we were once sinners we were once at the backyard but glory be to god for the love of god which we will be getting into it in a minute that he has brought us again again he has begotten us again to a living hope a living hope through the resurrection all right of jesus christ from the dead so the resurrection of jesus all right gives us the hope to live again the resurrection of jesus give us the hope to live again to to dream again to believe again to trust again to love again to move again and to have our being again hallelujah are you listening very very important here so i pray that um um uh, everybody can hear me now please let me get in i'm not getting anything here so i want to know if somebody is hearing me or getting um getting me with um, this message today all right let me see what's going on here okay now um okay kojo uh okay all right i believe i can be heard and um it's very important that i know this all right thank you so much sarah thank you very much please let me let me give me a you know just give me a sign of the uh, the like or something let me know that you guys are okay with um the broadcast here it's coming to you live now all right let me let me hear from you all right so now again let me let me read first verse three of first peter first peter again we are talking about the three graces of the holy spirit we have spoken early part of the um, the journey of this week in the area of faith we started with faith came down to hope and very soon we will enter into the area of love of love now the hope again first peter chapter 1 verse 3 says blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to live in hope i want you to underline living hope not not a dead hope living hope all right living hope from through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead we have a living hope through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead so the resurrection of jesus gives you and i hope to live move and have our being amen this is very important for for you and i to understand this now um again the importance of you understanding the importance of you understanding that um, god has sent his holy spirit to help us in every area of our life so this is the area which we 
have to understand now by the resurrection of Jesus Christ we have hope now the scripture says go with me now to um, um we have hope in Jesus Christ now look at um, look at uh, Romans chapter 14 verse 17 Romans chapter 14 verse 17 Romans the 14th chapter go with me to Romans the 14th chapter Romans the 14th chapter look at the 17th verse Romans the 14th chapter for the kingdom of God is not food and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in what the Holy Spirit righteousness peace joy in the Holy Spirit righteousness peace joy in the Holy Spirit all right and so this is where we have to understand we're talking about the Holy Spirit and uh, the three graces of the Holy Spirit the three graces of the Holy Spirit are you listening okay so we talk about the fact that the kingdom of God is not food and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in where in who in the Holy Spirit in the Holy Spirit beloved in the Holy Spirit not in anything else not in everybody but not I mean but in the Holy Spirit amen in the Holy Spirit all right now today we're going to jump from here into the next phase of the three graces of the Holy Spirit and that is in the area of love in the area of love love is the closest we can ever come to being like God because God is love love is the the closest that we can ever come to being like God love is the closest is the closest area in which we can uh, we can come um, to being like love like God because God is love God is love so we're going to be looking at some scriptures as to this area of the Holy Spirit as well all right the scripture says verse first John again first John again chapter 1 chapter 4 verse 8 go with me there first John chapter 8 I told you this week I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures for you to um, meditate and uh, enjoy your life with first John chapter chapter 4 verse 8 look at it here look at verse 7 first beloved let us love one another for love is of God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God did you hear that love is of God and everyone who is who loves is born of God and loves God hmm look in the mirror and ask the person you see in there do you have love do you have love or you have you are full of hate all right now verse 8 says he who does not love does not know God for God is love he who does not love does not know God why because God is love how how are you going to know the person whom you don't ascribe to his spirit is not in you you see now you see that you see that you see the importance of of um, having the Holy Spirit in you because the Holy Spirit connects with the Spirit of God because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God the Holy Spirit is spirit so if the Spirit of God is in you you connect with God all right so scripture says first John chapter 4 listen to this again beloved let us love one another for God is of love and for love is of God love is of God and if everyone who loves is born and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God everyone who is born of God knows God because that person is full of love now verse 8 again he who does not love does not know God for God is love verse 9 in this in this the love of God was manifested towards us 
that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. That we might live through him. Are you listening? And so if we if we cannot show or demonstrate this this attribute of God, well, then there's a question. All right. Let every let us love one another. For love is of God. And this is the area I want you to just underline this. And everyone who love is born of God and knows God. Everyone who loves is born of God. Mother Lawrence, God bless you. I trust you are doing well in Nigeria. Amen. Everyone who is born, where is that? Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Verse 8 again. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So when we come into the area of this very important area of our lives, love, then the question is, why are we then fighting each other? If you claim you love me, why are you then working against me? Why are you then doing evil things against me if you claim you love you have love of god so question the love you talk about we are talking here or you talk about you want to be everything and see me be nothing and yet you say you have the love of god in your heart no you don't no you don't are you listening to me no you don't because anyone who love is born of God. So you want to see me succeed. You want to see me make it. You want to see me go ahead. You want to see me win. You want to see me, um, you know, victorious. You don't want to see me in shame and disgrace, embarrassment. You don't want to see me sick. You don't want to see me down. You, if you claim you love me. Then you will support me. If you claim you love me, you will help me. If you claim you love me, you will see me go ahead. If you claim you love me, you will wish me good and not evil. If you claim you love, and the love of God is in your heart, why are you bewitching another pastor who is doing the same work of God? If you claim you love and the love of god is in your heart why are you trying to get another man or woman of god to be destroyed if you claim you have the love of god in you if you have the love of god in you why don't you want to be a blessing god is love and for so for so this reason he even sent his only begotten son to come and save you from your sinful life. I mean, we can't even get you to give your last. You want to grab everything for yourself. Yet you claim you love. Are you sure? Well, I am not the judge, but... I can ask you that question. <laughs> now, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God is love. Love is the first and the greatest commandment, the first and the greatest commandment, according to Scripture. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Let's go there, Mark, the 12th chapter. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark. If you don't know where Mark is, after Matthew, you, you will come to Mark. Mark chapter 12. All right, come on, let's do it. Mark chapter 12. We had a little glitch here when we started with this broadcast today. But thank be to God that we are still 
moving forward. Mark the 12th chapter. Are you there with me yet? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. Let's look at verse 30. Mark chapter 12. Now, verse 29. Let's read from verse 29 down. Jesus answered and said, The, the first of all the commandments is here. Now, hear this. That's what he's saying. Hear, all Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Hear, O Israel. Israel, hear. Okay? Now, verse 30 says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. You shall love, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Your heart, your heart is the first place, your heart. Out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your heart, you shall love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Now look at this. Your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. Now, that looks to me that this is the ingredients we need and use in our everyday life. Every day. Your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. And you shall love God with all of these areas of your life. These are all areas of your life. All right? These are all areas of your life. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Your heart. Not all your heart. Not some of your heart. Your all. All of your heart. Now, beloved, if you have love, in your heart concerning the things of God, which other area of your heart do you have the space to hate another man of God, another woman of God? That all you want to do is to you want to bewitch them. Now you tell me, you tell me, I'm not going to you know give you any name, but you tell me if you have love all of your heart to love God what kind of space else do you have in your heart to want to not be happy for another person who is doing the same work of God hmm? okay all your heart all of your soul your soul what 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 con contributes to your soul what are your your six senses your 12 senses all those areas of your life your soul all right with your mind your mind if you have love in your mind if you have love of god in your mind i mean how do you then sit down and premeditate of bewitching another person and you claim you have love jesus says love your god with all your heart number one number two with all your soul number three with all your mind ah number four hey with all your strength now, if you are so busy about the things of God, what other space and time do you have to want to be gossiping about another person? If you are so, you are with all your strength, you don't have time to want to bewitch another person. If you indeed have 
love. You are loving God with all your strength. Do you think you will have time to think evil of somebody else? If nothing else, I think you want to help the other person. This morning I saw a, a video of uh, this gentleman who is literally crying out of a soul, out of a spirit. About everybody, he's just talking to everybody to pray for their pastors. Because he knows a pastor who was give who who gave all, and um, he just could not handle it anymore. Of the of the betrayals and disappointments and all that, he couldn't handle. However, he ended up his life. I don't. He didn't say, but this guy was um, just just literally pleading for everybody to pray for their pastors. Love your pastors. Love your pastors. Listen, they are, they are, they are, they are just human beings like you. Are you listening? They are just human beings like you. God chose them to shepherd you, but you don't want to just kill your shepherd. Is that is the word that the enemy does that Jesus says when you smite the shepherd, smiting the shepherd is to do evil to the shepherd so that the sheep will scatter. That is the work of the devil. So if you are not helping the pastor and you are bewitching the pastor, then you have the love of Satan, not the love of God. You have the hate of Satan not the love of God. You ain't helping the pastor, gossiping about the pastor with the same mouth you are using to praise God. You are bewitching the pastor, talking evil about the pastor, plotting evil about the pastor, and you claim you love God. What kind of hypocrisy is that? Now you tell me, you don't want to help, just leave it alone. You don't want to, you know, support, leave it alone. But to rather, see, this is why I'm saying that there is no space, good and bad, there's no space in between. Beloved, there's no space in between. It's either you are for or you are against. Jesus says, if they are not with us, then they are against us. If they are not for us, then they are against us. So there's no in between, all right? So you cannot say that, well, I am not, I don't hate you, but at the same time, I don't love you. Are you, you, you lying to yourself? <laughs> are you listening to me? Stop lying to yourself. Oh, oh, okay. All right, I got it. You just love me from afar. Okay, I got it. I understand that one too. <laughs> Hallelujah. I understand that one too. Amen. Praise God. Now, um, this is very, very interesting. It's very interesting. So Jesus is saying that, number one, love, you shall love God with all. Not See, I want you to underline this area where Jesus says, it says all, not some. Not some, all, okay, of your heart, all with with all your soul and with all your mind, and then with all your strength. This is the first commandment. This is the first commandment. Now, do you see why we could not obey if this command? Now, how many people do you think are still even? Even, even obeying this commandment. You tell me. This first commandment. This is the first commandment. That you shall love God. You shall love God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Are you listening? This is the first commandment. So now, in the area of love, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit helps us in the area of Love. That's the first commandment. Now, verse um, um, 
31 says, look at verse 31. And the second, and the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. <laughs> Did you see that? So the same amount of love that you claim you have for God, you should have the same amount of love for your neighbor. Woo, I am a teacher of the word. I'm teaching you the word. Now, I leave the Holy Spirit to do what he's doing in your life right now by you listening to me. I know you might be getting angry, but don't get angry with me. The Holy Spirit is working in you and allow him to see it. You got, I, I, I may be hitting some wrong sides of you. I understand that. I was once in that place too, but I'm here. Glory be to God. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, when fear goes away, fear take. I mean, all these things goes with fear. Envy, jealousy, hatred, all those things, they go with fear. Because those are the attributes of fear. Are you listening to me? And so when fear goes away, it goes away with all this, all this junk. Now, verse 31 says, Jesus is saying that. And the second part, <clears throat> excuse me, the second part of the first commandment is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Now, the question is how much of the same love you claim you have for God do you have for your neighbor? How much? Don't answer me. Don't answer me. Answer yourself. How much? Beloved, how much? Ah. Let me give you one more. We're going to close for the day. First Corinthians 13, chapter 1. I mean, chapter 13. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Oh. Uh, let me speak a Ghanaian language. <laughs> Oh, glory be to God. I'm having a ball in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. First Corinthians. Come on, go with me to First Corinthians, the 13th chapter. First Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Come on, let's read from the first verse. All right, let's read the first verse. Uh, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Love is necessary for all our duties for Christ. Love is necessary for all our duties of Christ or for Christ love is necessary beloved love is necessary it's very very necessary these are three components or three graces we've been talking about all week of the Holy Spirit love is necessary love is necessary for all our duties all Underline the word, all our duties for Christ Jesus. Verse 1, 13 chapter of 1 Corinthians. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I have become as sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Though... I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love. I have become as sounding brass or a clenching symbol. 
Now, the, the love towards God and towards your neighbor is what we are talking about. Those are one, the three um, graces of the Holy Spirit. The third one is where we are now, love. Verse 2, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing, nothing. Verse 3, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be buried or to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. I'm going to end here with these three verses. All right, we'll pick it up tomorrow, same time. Ponder on these things. All right? Sila. And meditate on this for the day. Meditate on this. Beloved, for you to be able to do these things, you must have the Spirit of Christ Jesus in you. You must have the Spirit of Christ Jesus in you. You must... You must receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And if you have not done that, you must do that right now. All right? And let me pray for you and with you to do that. Okay? All right? It's very important. You, you cannot do this. Because, listen, these things, these things, you cannot do on your own ability. You cannot. That is why the Holy Spirit is here to help us in this area of our lives. And this is a very, very practical area of our daily life and living. We live this every day. All right. We have hope for the day. We have we are hoping that something good that 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 we have prayed to God about will happen. We are hoping that this person will show us, you know, some good. We are hoping that uh, this application I put in for this job, uh, they will call me for an interview. We are hoping that, you know, uh, I'll be able to pay this bill. We are hoping, we have hope. Hope is part of, of our daily life. So this is a part of our practical Christian life. We have faith in God to receive. We have faith in God for, to, I mean, <clears throat> for today. We have faith in God. And then we have love. We must demonstrate our love not only to God, but to our neighbors. All right? Yes, I know sometimes, yeah, it, you know, Pastor, you don't know, you don't understand where, I'm, where I am. And well, trust me, I, 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 I have not finished it all, but I've been through some areas of life that, that makes gives me the the, um, the experience uh, to testify to you that it is possible. It is possible. It is possible and possible. Are you listening? So before you can do this, you must accept Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus must be in you for you to be able to do that. Let me pray with you right now if you are that person. That person. Listen, don't wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. All right, receive Jesus today, right now. Let him come into your life and let his spirit help you into, the Holy Spirit help you to every area of your life that you can help yourself. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He's, he's come to help you and me. I have received him. He's helping me. How about you? Is the Holy Spirit helping you? If you are not, then I want you to know that you must Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then be baptized in the Holy Spirit for him to come dwell with you and be in you and then help you in all areas of your life. All right? So pray with me right now. Say, lift up. Listen, pray with all your faith. All right? Believe in it that Jesus is coming into your life to be the Lord and Savior right now. Okay? Let's pray right now. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I thank you for this message I have heard. Indeed, I am a sinner. I am not qualified, but I receive you into my life to qualify me. You said there's now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So as I come into you, as I receive you as my Lord and Savior, Lord, come into my life. Be the Lord and Savior of my life, my soul, my body, and every area of my life. I thank you for receiving me. I thank you for loving me. And I thank you for having me. I love you, Lord, and I'm grateful to you for dying for me. Write my name in your book and make me a disciple by the help of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, if you just pray that prayer, you have been born again. Oh, yes. It's a spiritual birth. It's not a physical one. But you see the manifestation of, the, of that spiritual move you just made in your physical and practical life. Watch, you're going to see it. All right? Now, if you just did that, and um, you are not part of any um, local assembly or church, as we call it, find one in your geographic you know, location, all right? A Bible teaching church. You need the teaching. Very important. All right? You just don't need somebody to be yelling and screaming and, you know, saying things that will, will tickle your funny and stir up your emotions. And by the end, end of the day, you don't really have nothing to stand on. You need the Word of God. Okay? And so find a Bible teaching church. Plug yourself in there. Introduce yourself to the leadership. Let them know you've been born again. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And now I want to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you baptize your children, wherever they are under the sound of my voice. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And um, receive it by faith. Leave it with all your heart. And um, look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Don't look to nobody. Look to Jesus. All right? Now, um, again, we had a little kind of click, but uh, we'll fix it and um, bring you um, the segment where we'll be broadcast live across the social media, you know, the Periscope, the Twitter, the YouTube, uh, and the whole nine yards. So you see the crawler with all the information on it, all right, for you to do that. In the meantime, in the meantime, you can go to the website of this ministry, www. PatrickQuenoMinistries.com and um, you will get more information on there. All right? Be part of, of what we're doing. Be part of it and uh, let's do it together. May God bless you. Share this broadcast to your friends and loved ones and I want you to know that you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God and in all thy getting, get understanding.